What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here, and you're geeking out to the Gear Gods. What's up, guys? Andrew Brady here, and it is that time of the week. It is that time of the week, which is what I just said, and the time of the week is the FAQ time because it is Sunday, and that is the time when I do the FAQ videos. Before we get into the questions, as usual, I got some plugs to make, and you guys are going to listen to them, and they go as follows. First and foremost, big shout out to my Patreon supporters, as always. Once again, the best way to support me is on Patreon at the moment. As I've mentioned multiple times now, I'm doing YouTube full time and Patreon is quite simply the best financial way to support me. But with that being said, you're not just donating to me for no reason, although there is a donation tier in which case you would be donating to me for no reason. But there are other tiers where you get rewards such as audio downloads to all of the audio I upload on my channel, including a lot of stuff that I cannot put on Spotify or Apple Music such as basically any of the Guitar Riff Evolution or Tuned Down videos. I am not allowed to put those on Spotify or Apple Music, so if you want downloads to any of those, you can get that on my Patreon. You can also get the stems for basically all of the audio that I do, which is of course the individual guitar tracks, bass tracks, drums, synths, whatever else is going on in my songs. You can get those as well if you're into production and want to hear how my stems sound and play with them. You can do that as well via my Patreon. The next thing I want to mention is of course my merch store. I haven't released any new merch in a while, but in case you haven't looked at it yet, go take a look. I've got plenty of designs up there, some of which I am personally very proud of and I think are very awesome, and you might too. And last but not least, before we get on to the questions, I just want to mention that some of these questions are taken from my Discord server. So if you are a Discord user, be sure to join my server and post your questions in the FAQ submissions channel. It's basically just a big online chat room where you can talk to me and a bunch of other people about gear, music, metal, gaming, pretty much anything you want as long as you're not a dick. You can do that on my Discord server. So with all of the plugs out of the way, let's get into the questions. And the first question comes from Axed into L on Discord and they ask, what audio interface and recording software do you use? This is a very easy question with a very easy answer. I keep it very simple. I use a Steinberg UR44 for my interface, which you can see right there. Very small, four inputs, four outputs, has a MIDI in, MIDI out, very basic stuff. I don't really need much more because I do everything direct. I'm not miking up a cab, I'm not miking up a drum kit or anything like that, so I don't need a ton of input, so this is what I use. It's not a very expensive interface, I think it's like 300 bucks Canadian maybe, so not too bad. Um, before this I was using a Scarlett 2i2 which is even less expensive, and I used that for like 3 or 4 years, so yeah that's what I use. Um, and as for software, there's a giant list of plugins I'm sure, but the basic software that I use is called Reaper which I'm sure you've seen in a ton of my other videos. That's what I use as my digital audio workstation. Next up is another Discord question. This comes from Taylor at Pyramids, and he asks, what did you do before you took on YouTube as a full-time job, and do you have any regrets on the decision? So before I quit my job and started doing YouTube full-time, what I was actually doing was working at what's called an MCN, uh, which is basically a network that operates on YouTube. The easiest way that I've always found to explain it was basically like a record label for YouTubers it was kind of the most accurate way I could just explain it in a way that most people would understand. So pretty much what it says, you signed your YouTube channel up to that network and you got specific perks for being a member of the network essentially um, in exchange for of course a cut of your monthly earnings. Um, the reason I got that job is because my channel is also connected to that network. Um, and that's kind of how I ended up talking with them a lot and then eventually turned into a job offer. Um, I specifically worked on the music team, which was great, so I only had to deal with music all day. Even though mostly it wasn't music that I personally like, it was mostly like R&B and hip hop and rap and EDM and stuff like that. Not really much metal going on, but it was still cool to work in the music industry regardless. And I learned a lot about YouTube from working there that I did not know before and it helped me grow my channel a lot. As you can see, obviously, over the past two years is basically when I was working there and also working my ass off on my channel on the side using everything I learned from the job. And that's kind of how I was able to figure out a lot of things that I definitely wouldn't have known if I didn't ever take that job. Um, so, so far, I do not have any regrets. I'm very much enjoying doing YouTube full time. I'm making a lot less money than I was making, obviously, which I knew was going to happen. But other than the financial situation, 
literally everything else is better. Not that I didn't like my job, don't get me wrong, my coworkers are, were awesome and still are awesome. I go and visit them every once in a while and I had a great time working there, but you know, it's obviously always been my dream to make music or make content in some way, shape, or form. Ever since I was a kid, I was always super interested in videography and guitar, and now that's what I do all the time, so it's great so far. Um, we'll see how it goes. If my financial situation doesn't get better by the end of like year one, then maybe I'll reevaluate and see if this is the right move or maybe I do need to get a job again. Hopefully not. I would love to just keep doing this in an ideal world, but I don't know, I guess we'll find out in a year, so check back then. Next question comes from Evan Sales on YouTube. I see him comment all the time, so shout out to you, Evan. Uh, he says, hey, Baina, if you had an unlimited budget for your dream vehicle, what kind of vehicle would you want? Color, rims, mods. Also, when is Static X tuned down coming out? So I am admittedly not very much of a car person at all. I don't really know anything about cars. My brother, on the other hand, is actually a mechanic at Volkswagen, and that's his thing. He's always been the car guy, and I've been the music guy. Um, I don't really know anything about cars, so my response will probably be very basic. I've always really liked, like, Audis. Those have always been, like, the most badass-looking car, in my opinion, so maybe, like, an Audi R8, but, like, modded to be, obviously, like, lime neon green or something like that. I don't know anything about rims or mods, so I'm just gonna leave that blank, and let's just say a stock Audi R8 in lime neon green. That would be cool, I think. And as for the second part of your question about Static X tuned down, to be completely honest with you, I have, I'm pretty sure I've never heard any of their music. I might have heard like a song, but I don't know anything about that band at all, so probably won't do that, but I guess never say never. So if that's something that a ton of people want to see, then maybe I'll do it, but I personally have no interest in that band per se, so. Not high up on my priority list. Sorry about that, Evan. Next up comes from a Discord from one jaunty boy who has a beautiful profile picture of my face doing an extremely flattering uh, expression, so thanks for that. And he says, can an Evertune be an alternative to longer scale length? So for this question, it's a little bit of a tricky one because it goes a little outside of my realm of knowledge. I don't want to accidentally tell you guys something wrong, but if we're talking about just tension, then in my opinion, yes, because on my H-string here that I have with the Evertune, I feel like I bring this up every time that I'm doing a video like this, but that's okay. So on this guitar, um, it came stock with like a 65 on the low F-sharp string, and with the Evertune that actually felt completely fine because you can just increase or decrease the tension right on the guitar by just twisting the tuning knob. So a very brief explanation of how this works is your tuners do not actually tune your guitar with an Evertune, they just increase or decrease the tension. You actually change the tuning by using like a hex key and doing some weird stuff down there, which I just spent like an hour doing, setting this up for the first time in drop E with string gauges that I actually like. Um, so in terms of tension, I would say yes, the Evertune does compensate for tension quite a bit. Um, I don't know about intonation though, that's a whole other topic that I will not go into because I am so unfamiliar with how to set up guitars that I don't want to give you guys the wrong information. But if we're talking about just tension, yes, you can definitely get away with using thinner strings and just increasing the tension on an Evertune pretty easily. Hopefully that answers your question to some extent. All right, next up we got a question from Veli Pekka Rautenen on YouTube, and he asks, can we get the questions in bigger fonts? We can't really see them. All right, next up, another question from YouTube. This one comes from Hippie Hobo, and he says, is Gibson Big L Dean always wins? Yeah, so this whole Gibson thing that's been going on is so ridiculous in my opinion. Um, I'm sure you guys all know about this, but in case you somehow don't, basically what happened is Gibson made this cringy ass video called Play Authentic, where basically they kind of threatened all other companies that were using Gibson's designs, such as like a Les Paul and a Flying V, let's say. Um, and essentially they threaten to sue everyone who makes a guitar that's that shape, even if they've changed the headstock. And the first thing that they did was they tried to sue Dean Guitars um, for a Flying V design, even though the headstock is completely different on a, a Gibson and a Dean, obviously. Um, and I'm pretty sure they lost that lawsuit, or at least they lost it in Europe or something like that. And then they made a new post, like completely backpedaling and trying to claim that that was like a pre-existing lawsuit from before the new owners took over. I don't know, man, it's honestly so confusing and just so 
such a bad look for Gibson. It's like, bro, just make some fucking better guitars and stop complaining about what other people are doing and people will realize you're doing well and buy your shit even more. Also, you're like the biggest guitar brand in the world. Like, are you really gonna benefit off of taking business away from somebody else? Like, people are already buying Gibsons. You don't need to like take over other companies. You're, you're fine, you're gonna be all right. You have enough money, trust me. Next up, we got a question from Guitar Memes channel on YouTube and he asks, what were you like in your high school days? Were you ever picked on, lonely, or introverted? This is a pretty deep question. Um, for the most part in high school, I would say I was... I don't know. I mean, your perception of yourself is not necessarily how you actually were. But I always thought of myself to be slightly... Not a loner, per se, but I had basically had like a group of like really core friends. Like, I had this group of like four people that I was super tight with and I would just always hang out with them. And then there was like other friends around that, but it was always like a really tight knit group, a very small group of friends. Um, and then like when we would do stuff in a bigger group then obviously I had other friends as well, but that, I don't know if that really answers the question, but I was never one to like hang out with like a ton of people. Usually it was usually more like hanging out one-on-one -on -one or with a couple of friends. Um, so I don't know, I mean I had a pretty good group of friends at the time, didn't end up being such a good group of friends later on in life, but that's a whole other story. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, I just spent like a lot of time with my high school girlfriend, again, unfortunately, in retrospect, but such is life, and that core group of friends, and we all just kind of did whatever together, and that was how it was. Um, I definitely didn't feel lonely, or I, I guess I was kind of introverted in the sense that like, I, there wasn't that many people that listened to like metal or played guitar or did music at my school because I went to like a Catholic school so obviously it kind of stuck out like a sore thumb, sore thumb, Jesus, sore thumb. Um, so again when I had that group of friends that were into metal and music they were kind of the ones that I stuck with the most um, and other than that it was like a little harder I guess to branch out and talk to other people because I was like what do I talk to people about if I'm not talking about guitars or music? So hopefully that answers your question, at least that's how I think I was in high school, but maybe other people in high school will tell you something completely different. I don't know, I don't really talk to most of those people anymore, so I guess we'll see. The next question, this isn't really a question, but I wanted to throw this in there because I thought it was funny. This comes from Wrecked Games on YouTube and he says, has anyone ever told you that you look so metal and non-metal at the same time? How is that even possible? I have no idea what you mean by this. It's kind of just per perplexing me since I saw this comment five days ago. It's just like, I don't know. I just felt like I had to share this and see if other people thought the same thing. I don't know. I mean, I wear metal t-shirts and jeans and have stretched ears. I guess that's about it. I guess I have tattoos. I don't know. Does that make someone look metal? Not really, because pretty much everyone has tattoos and piercings and for some reason metal band t-shirts are like a fashionable thing now maybe that's what you mean i don't really know what you meant not really a question just wanted to address this because i thought it was interesting the next question comes from akrit Pradhan and he says hey ola oh sorry wrong channel i don't know what you're talking about man this is not ola england channel this is my channel my name is andrew Baina. i'm not anything like ola england at all so i don't know where you're getting that idea from next question comes from juho nayamela juho i don't know that sounds inappropriate when i say that like that hopefully that's how you actually pronounce that otherwise i feel terrible Anyways, he says, favorite pickups, by the way, love your videos and awesome content with the little metal horns. Uh, so thank you, first of all, for saying you love my content. I really appreciate that. Um, I think my favorite pickups at the moment, out of the ones I've tried, have been the ones that I have in this Fast Guitars 7 string right here. And these are the Mark Holcomb from Periphery Alpha Omega pickups by Seymour Duncan. Luckily for me, through my relationship with Seymour Duncan, I've been able to try out a bunch of their pickups over the past year. And I don't know what it is about these pickups in particular, or these pickups in this guitar, or whatever the combination might be, but every single time I want to play a 7-string lately, I just always grab this guitar and these pickups sound so good. I think when I renew my um, endorsement with Seymour Duncan, assuming they want to renew it with me, I mean, I would love to, hopefully they do too, um, I think I'm probably going to try the Alpha Omega set in an eight string as well and see if they also work really well in that. Like maybe put an eight string set in my solar eight string or something like that. Cause I absolutely love how these pickups sound in this guitar. So I would love to hear how they sound in some of my other guitars as well. The next question comes from Josh on Discord. Shout out to Josh. He's the one that actually made my Discord server. Um, and he asks, 
do you still make time for actual guitar practice these days, going over scales, etc., or do you just get better by learning songs all the time for your videos? So I actually don't practice guitar at all. I don't know any guitar scales, I don't know any chords, I don't know any theory. I've said that before, and I'm sure some of you think that that shows based on what I play, and fair enough, maybe you're right, but yeah, so I don't actually practice guitar ever. Basically making these videos is the only time when I'm playing guitar because other than making videos like Not that I hate playing guitar or anything But the last thing I want to do is like spend six or eight hours a day making a YouTube video on guitar and then Being done the video and playing even more guitar like basically when my fiance gets home from work Music goes away and I go and hang out play video games watch movies with her do whatever but the last thing I do is play guitar, so pretty much I don't really have time to practice. I mean, I could make time, as you say, but I don't know, I'm just not really interested. Because when I'm playing guitar, it's usually for the purpose of making a video, and other than that, I just don't really want to touch them. Alright, next question comes from Ed Loomingly, and he asks, Hey Andrew, what are your opinions on Strandberg guitars? I'm saving for a new toy, and I'm split between a Strandberg 8-string and an Ibanez 9-string. Love to hear your thoughts on Strandberg, though. Yeah, Strandberg guitars are awesome. The only thing that's weird about them, which some people love and some people hate, and it's really, really hard to make a judgment call unless you try it for yourself, is the neck profile. Um, so as you probably know if you've been looking into Strandberg, they have this thing called the Ender Neck, or Ender Neck, or however they pronounce it. And it's basically like an asymmetrical neck profile. So obviously a normal guitar has like a C or a D shape usually. But with this one, it's almost like there's a like horizontal line going across the back of the neck diagonally. So the, I guess the theory is like your thumb is always on a flat surface no matter where you are and the flat part kind of uh, is aligned with where your thumb should be based on where your hand is on the neck. So in practice, it is a very cool idea and like makes sense theoretically. But when you play it, it definitely feels super weird. Um, I would imagine if you got your own Strandberg and played it for like a couple weeks, it would probably feel completely normal. However, I don't know if it would be weird going between like a Strandberg neck and a normal neck. I don't know because I've never owned one, but as for the actual feel and look of Strandbergs, I think they are built very, very well. Every time I've tried one, I've been super impressed. They always sound amazing. They're super lightweight and I personally love the Strandberg headless design. It looks fantastic. So overall, I have a very high opinion of the brand, even though I've never personally owned one. Although, uh, <laughs> shout out to Strandberg, maybe hook me up with one, but you know. All right, the next question comes from Romain Yen, and they ask, what strings do you use and what is your favorite guitar or bass? So, for the most part, I use string joy strings. Basically, for all of my weird guitars that are in weird tunings, like A strings and 7 strings that are in drop F and all that, I basically always use string joy because, you know, it's hard to find weird string digits like that around here. And also, String Joy was one of the first companies to ever endorse me and my channel. So I've stuck with them throughout the years and they have treated me very right. Um, yeah, so I definitely would highly recommend String Joy if you're looking for weird custom strings. Um, I'll obviously admit that I don't exclusively use String Joy just because sometimes if it's like a six string tuning, it just makes more sense to like drive five minutes down the road to a music store and just grab a pack of strings. It's just easier and cheaper. But for anything custom and weird, I always try and use String Joy whenever possible. And as for your question regarding my favorite guitar or bass, I'm pretty sure I've answered the favorite guitar question like every FAQ. And the favorite bass question is very easy because I only have one, but it is of course my beautiful neon green swirl Dingwall NG2-5. Five string, Nolly Get Good from Periphery, but not from Periphery's bass. This is a bass that I thought I would never own, and I'm very, very lucky and very happy that I do own it. Favorite bass right here for sure. All right, and that'll do it for this week's FAQ video. That was all the questions. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have your own questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, or as I said earlier, join my Discord server, go into the FAQ submissions channel, and ask me questions there as well. Once again, I hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out the links in the description below. I look forward to reading your comments and questions, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much.